Okay, James. In uh, several of your uh, articles, uh, you wrote about institutionalization as a main process that is uh, going on uh, in public relation and has to do uh, with how important they are becoming for uh, large organization. So, can you tell us something about this process? Well, the idea of institutionalization comes, I think, because of my frustration after over about 40 years in the field, thinking that after all this time, the practice of public relations would have changed away from what has traditionally been a publicity and messaging function toward more of a strategic management function in the way that I've theorized and conceptualized. And after now, being in my mid-sixties, I haven't seen a huge amount of change, although there is in a number of major organizations it has. So one of my students had read the literature on institutionalization in sociology, and it's questions like how does marriage become what it is, or how does uh, different kinds of of behaviors evolve and how do they become accepted as institutions so that people believe that's what it is or how it's done or what something is. And unfortunately I think that has not changed very rapidly that that uh, practitioners, public relations practitioners, their, their clients, their, their senior management journalists see public relations basically as this kind of superficial messaging kind of function. So I've realized that to change it we have to think about reinstitutionalizing the way people think of and practice public relations. And that I am not quite sure how it should be done, but I have some ideas. I think we can use case studies of uh, public relations as a strategic function that we teach to our students. I think organizations should preserve histories of, of how they have practiced public relations in a different way. But you mentioned uh, the study of your student and actually this uh, refers uh, to the organizational theory where institutional theory is a very important uh, uh, theory uh, in this field. And uh, it seems that uh, public relation uh, has to do a lot of important, uh, to reach important goals that institutional theory uh, in a way uh, uh, tell us. Uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, so uh, it seems that uh, um, coming from the institutional theory, the organizational institutional theory, public relation in a way uh, has to uh, to fill a lot of important goals, like for instance uh, defining um, defining values, organizational values, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some other uh, activities that are so important for the organization mm -hmm. to. Uh, Yes. Well, I think public relations becomes part of defining the institute, the organization as an institution. Right. I think I'm referring more to public relations, the profession as an institution itself. Okay. So that the, institution yeah. builders within organizations yes. would not see that role for public relations that you're describing. Yeah. So the question is, how do we change? the practice of public relations, the way people think about it, and so on, so that it's accepted as, if you will, an institution building function, not just a, what, um, oh, for example, sociologists have called a buffering function, trying something to protect right. the organization right. Right. from the, or, the environment without having to change to, uh, or to change in a way that's desirable for the environment. Right. In the bridging uh, function uh, that you mentioned yes. in your articles, uh, there there are a lot of important uh, uh, activities uh, like uh, uh, stakeholder engagement more right. than management yes. uh, that could be very important for, for the organization and uh, for the profession of public yes. relations. Is that true? Well, this term came from Case von Riel of the Netherlands who wrote an article a few yeah. years ago defining the difference between bridging and buffering. And this is something my my student, a uh, man named Yuck Yi from Korea, had yeah. discovered. And 
I said, you know, that's really the difference. It's become institutionalized as a buffering function. And how could we reinstitutionalize it as okay. a bridging function? Right. And this was a term actually that came from W. A. Scott, a sociologist who wrote, I believe, in the 1960s or 70s about uh, bridging and buffering as, as communication right. function. So this is what you mention when you say this is what you mean when you say reinstitutionalizing right. from change. buffering to bridging. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, then this morning we found, heard a very interesting discussion by Francesco Lorati of right. Switzerland about how can we put those, combine those two functions because I see things as image and identity and brands right. and reputation as mostly defined and practiced as a buffering role rather than a bridging role. But uh, trying to combine, if it is possible, the kind of uh, interpretive cognitive approach to public relations which is much more common in Europe I think than in the US with what I see as more of a uh, behavioral strategic management function. Yeah. Right. This is a very important issue that I hope we'll, uh, we'll discuss yeah. in, our, uh, in our Congress. Right. Thank you very much Jim. Thank you. Thank you very much.